good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome again to another day of Sabbath celebration, amen. As the sun is shining nice and bright today, we pray that the S-O-N is shining in you today. Amen, amen. So welcome again to Dale Wright Memorial Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'm the presiding elder for today, Elder Horace Facey. Uh, let us all stand together and repeat the fourth commandment, which is found in Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11. Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11, and it says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that was in thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all in them is, and rested the seventh day, Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and he hallowed it. Thy heads with me, please. Our dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you one more time for allowing us to be in your house today. Lord, we just thank you for this Sabbath day, Lord, and this time that you've carved out for us to reflect on you and to worship you and to sing praises to your name. Lord, we just thank you for getting us here safe, and we don't invite you presence, Lord, because you've already promised to be here, Lord, so open our hearts and our minds, Lord, to receive your spirit, and today that we may be able to worship you, not only in, in body presence, but in spirit and in truth. We thank you for your love. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Please remain standing for our first hymn for today. I survey the wondrous cross as hymn number 154. 154.
I survey that wondrous cross. And I was going over that hymn this morning. I had to kind of keep myself in composure because surveying that cross and what God has done for us, we cannot fathom what kind of love that is has afforded to us. We just thank our Heavenly Father for the sacrifice of Jesus for us. Which also leads to our next part of our service here, where we're only through that sacrifice that we can call God our Father. And that's how we reach out to Him in prayer. So at this time, as we prepare our hearts for intercessory prayer this morning, are there any prayer requests or praise reports today. Just an answer. Two prayer requests. Um, I, I hope I'm not stepping on any toes by bringing this up. My former mother-in-law's very close companion, um, 94 years old, passed away last Sunday, or Monday, and my ex-mother-in-law is having a really hard time with it. She'll be 95 this year and my kids are having a hard time because they're afraid that his death will make her give up and then two days later my aunt CJ um, from Cleveland she was one of the last three of the people in my, that generation my father's generation passed away so now there's only two left um, she was 82 just shy of 83rd birthday that's the expiration date in our family, just so you guys know. 83, everybody dies before they turn 84. Anyway, um, she's she passed away on Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm not sure. Uh, her funeral is next week, and her her husband of 42 years and her kids are not having a good time of it. So if you could pray for C.J. Prentice's family, I'd appreciate it. procedures uh, happening this week, Monday and Tuesday um, in our family. So just prayers that both of uh, the faces come, come home <laughs> in the way they left, except for one, but <laughs> for these things. Yes, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Praise report. I'm, I'm so in November, um, my A1C <laughs> was 5.7. I was really upset because one point over, that 5.6, I was one point over. And I was really upset about that five, that that one point, that, I'm sorry, point one. And um, was checked this week, 5.2. <laughs> amen, amen. We got, we got a mic coming. to God for sustaining me, Amen. sustaining my family, for getting me here safely, for walking with me every day of my life. Amen. Amen. If there's no one else, uh, let us uh, bow our heads as we approach the throne of grace. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much again for allowing us to see another Sabbath day. Lord, we thank you for the very air that we breathe. Lord, we thank you for providing us traveling mercies all through this week. We thank you for keeping a roof over our heads and food on our table, Lord, and waking us up each day in our right mind, dear God. 
and even walking by our side day by day, keeping us from seen and unseen dangers. Lord, we wanna, don't want to take those blessings for granted, Lord. We want to verbally say thank you for everything that you provide for us, Lord, even the things that we don't ask for that you know we need. We say thank you. We even say thank you, Lord, for not giving us the things that we ask for, that you know that will not be for our good. We say thank you. And Lord, Father, before we ask of anything from you, Lord, we ask that you will cleanse us all. Wash us that will be white as snow. And Lord, when we talk about forgiveness, we ask, Father, that you forgive us. But not this blanket slate forgiveness, Lord, but bring to our hearts and our minds the very thing that we need to confess to you or to one another. Because you say in your word, you are faithful to forgive us as we should be faithful to forgive one another. But also, Lord, soften our hearts and our minds to even receive that forgiveness that comes from you. The enemy may try to paint the picture that we're not worthy, but you've proved our worthiness, Lord, to you by the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. Lord, you've heard the prayer request this morning. Prayers for comfort. Prayers for healing. And thanks for healing. Lord, you know all the things that we go through and, and the times that we need you more. We just pray for those families, Lord, that have been impacted by loss. And not just recent, Lord, because those of us have may have gone on, but there are those that are still hurting. So, Father, please stretch your arms out and wrap them in your arms of love. And let them feel your, the warmness of your spirit. But, Lord, also, God, remind us to keep in touch with those who unknown to us or sometimes we forget that they're still hurting so may we be that physical touch and that physical voice that can be the hand and the mouth of God Lord we just ask and pray for our church and those members who are traveling this week Lord as they are going to lay a loved one to rest Lord, there's just so much suffering among us, Lord, but we know the world and the condition that we live in. And we see the, the times, and we know that you're coming as soon. So, Lord, we're praying this morning, Father, not to just get us ready, Lord, but keep us ready. In season and out of season, Lord, because sometimes we can get a little comfortable and thinking we're okay. But we know, as the word says, that the enemy is roaring lion like a roaring lion seeking who he may destroy, Lord. So we just ask that you just keep us in your care. And may we remain faithful to the things that you called us to do. Lord, we lift up your manservant, Pastor King. As you've assigned him here at this time, Father God, continue to strengthen him physically and mentally and spiritually, Lord, that he may continue to do the work as much fervor as you give him, Lord. And may we receive your spirit, Lord, and not only just hearing a good message, Lord, but also applying it to our daily lives and impacting those among us. Just continue to be with our service here today, dear God. And we want to say we love you. We want to say we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
At this time, we'll go right into our scripture for today. And it is coming from Hebrews 7, verses 1 through 3. And if you could stand, and I'll read in your hearing. That's Hebrews chapter 7, verses 1, 2, and 3. And if, if you don't find it, it's also on the screen in front of you. And it says, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. May the Lord add a rich blessing to his to hearing and understanding of his word. You may be seated. Or no, remain standing. Remain standing. I'm sorry. We have one more hymn before our pastor comes before us. Great is thy faithfulness. That's him. 100.
morning everyone morning. happy sabbath we have some visitors who just join us i know some of you have been here before so in that sense you are not a visitor but uh, we would like to get ourselves reacquainted with those who have been here and those who haven't he been here before we want to welcome you so do you want to introduce or Someone do it for all or each one? Okay, yes. Thank you, Daphne. The people I know well, oh, thank you. The people that I know well is Clint Johnson. Yes. He was around when Troy was a baby. Oh, okay. From Chicago. From Chicago. Chicago. Chicago, yes. And they're very And I'm Kim. I'm a cousin uh, from uh, Springfield, Ohio. Okay. Wonderful. And we are Bridges and Yvette Henry from Chicago. We're friends of the Johnsons. Okay. All right. Well, welcome you to... Uh, Germantown, and as we said, this is not where you would normally find yourself. It is way out, away from, from, uh, <laughs> someone said, far from civilization. <laughs> Those who live in Germantown wouldn't agree with you, but, uh, but, but for us, yeah, we we are happy that uh, that you could join us uh, today. A, a contingent of our church is away at a, at a funeral in Tennessee, so uh, we have a smaller group than we would normally have. But it doesn't matter. All right, our hearts are big enough to embrace all of you. Who are here today and you will soon see why some people travel 30 40 minutes to come here all right <laughs> there's a reason for it and you'll soon you'll soon find out okay but Nancy you 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 told us about Jenny, is she doing better? Well, I texted her on, I think it was either yesterday or the day before. Marshall's taking very good care of her. He's a physical therapist, so mm -hmm. she's got her own personal therapist. She's doing well. Her daughter, who we've been praying for, and yeah. her friend are here from Utah. Oh, so um, uh, Lisa is going home tomorrow. No, no, uh, Monday. But they're taking really good care of her, and she says she's okay. Wonderful. For those of you who don't know, she was here last week, and she gave us special music. And uh, she was on the list for us to pray for during the week. So every week we pray for somebody different. So, so she was on the list last week. All right. Let us pray. Eternal Father, We came here for one reason, and that is to hear you speak. We don't have to give you permission because you are the God of all, the creator God, the sustainer of all life. But out of respect for you, O God, Give us listening ears that we will hear and that we will understand your word. Thank you for answering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
Now we are following a series uh, that is we are studying part of the book of Hebrews. And if we did it the way I wanted to do it, we would be doing it for the next two years. But I, but I realize that I can't do that, all right? Today we are looking at chapter 7, and the topic is a better priesthood, a better priesthood. So let's open up our scripture reading then from Hebrews chapter 7, and to help we have put it on the screen for because there are others who are not here but who are online uh, participating with us. Hebrews chapter <coughs> 7, 1, 2, and 3. We're going to read it and then we are going to look at it and get the message. I'm reading. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness, and then also <coughs> king of Salem, meaning king of peace, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of days, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. What is that all about? After I have confused you, now we are going to have to try to try to give give some understanding to what it is. So let's go back to first one. Now for for you visitors, what do we do? I am not the one who gets up and preach and preach and preach and perspire and and, and that type of thing, all right? Uh, what we do here is that we uh, interact. And don't be afraid as God gives you utterance, you can talk. And we, we have no problem with that. This is how we do it. Uh, if you do it another way, no problem. All right. Let's go back to verse 1 and something immediately catches my attention. That is the first phrase. It says, for this Melchizedek. What comes to mind first of all? Yes. This Melchizedek. This one. For it to be this one, what has happened first? Yeah, some something. This Melchizedek. So let's check and find out if something was mentioned about Melchizedek before. Because we are identified this one. All right? This one. The first. Remember, we are trying to get the connection. So we will start with Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 10. Called by God as high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. So that's mentioned in chapter 5. So this is the one we are talking about. This one, he was what? Called by God as what? As high priest. And I want you to underline that because we're going to come back to that in a minute. According to the order of Melchizedek. All right. Now you are still wondering in your mind, 
that I am talking about a man, but I haven't told you anything about him. You don't know anything about him. All you know so far is what? His name. All right. And that he was called by God as a what? As high priest. According to a new order. We will look at that in a minute. All right. And then I want to look at chapter 5 and verse 11. Which is the next verse coming. All right. 5, 11. Called by God as high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. And if you have it, you can read it for me. It's going to come up on the screen in a minute or so. Anyone has it? 511. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So this person by the name uh, Melchizedek is a difficult what? Is a difficult subject or person to talk about. And he said, look, I want to tell you about this person, but guess what? You are what? Yeah, you're dull of hearing, yes. You, 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 you can't understand. All right? And then he stops, that is, when the writer of Hebrew stops, and he says, you are like babies. You're still on milk. All right? But I want to give you up. I want to give you meat. Yeah, yeah. But you can't handle it. That's in chapter 5. And then in chapter 6, he stops completely. He doesn't say anything really about Melchizedek. Why? Because he says, you, 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 you're not ready for it. You're not ready for what is I plan to tell you. So instead, I am going to do something else. He says, number one, I'm going to give you a warning. All right? I'm going to give you a warning that you need to be careful that you don't uh, 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 get to the place where you give up on God. It was a very strong warning. Very strong. And along with the warning, he gave words of encouragement. Remember, this is a sermon. He's preaching a sermon now. So he gave what we call words of exhortation. That's in chapter 6. And now comes chapter 7, the thing he wanted to really talk about. He, he, he held it back, but now he says, look, I'm going to have to give it to you. So let's go back to chapter 7 of verse 1. For this Melchizedek, the person that we identified, he was also called what? King of what? Salem. He was also what? A priest uh, of the Most High. So we have, he's a king. His name is Melchizedek. He's a king and he's a priest. All right. And now he's going to give some history about him. And this history comes from Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14, we are going to find out from verses 18 to 20 the origin of this man. It says, Then Melchizedek. King of Salem, that's another word for him, King of Salem. And Salem later on was called Jerusalem. All right? Salem means peace. Today, I guess in the East, Shalom. All right? That would be the Hebrew, and Salam, I guess, would be the Arabic. So he was King, 
king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God most high. And he blessed him and said, all right, blessed be Abram of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand, and he gave him a tithe of all. I need to slow down and get it. Be patient with me. So Melchizedek, who's also the king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. All right? It's Melchizedek brought out bread and wine. If we were thinking about today, in church today, what, what, what comes to mind? Communion. <coughs> Communion. So he, he, he brought out bread and wine. And then it goes on to explain again, he was the priest of the Most High. Now, some things should be entering your mind all like now. Some things, and you're going to have to wait for it. All right. And he, that is Melchizedek, who's the priest of the Most High, blessed him and said, who did he bless? Abram. Now, this is before his name has been changed. That's Abram. So he blessed Abram of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand, and, ha and he gave him a tithe of all. All it is saying here is that we, if we read and continue reading, which I don't want to do now, uh, <clears throat> Abraham went to war against the king of Sodom. And uh, he was supposed to lose. He didn't have a strong army. The king of Sodom had a, a powerful army. But with God's help, what happened? Oh, he, he just not defeated, he, he slaughtered them, all right? Slaughtered all of them. And uh, Melchizedek then blesses Abram. The next one is, uh, I think it, this introduction is taking too long, so let's, let me hurry up and, and get it. Okay, back to back, back to uh, Hebrews. Hebrews. You see, we need to put it together because when 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 we weave it together, this is what we do. for this Melchizedek. I'm trying to show you who he was, King of Salem, priest of the Most High. It comes from so that he's a what we call a historical figure. How do we know Genesis? records it. All right. He met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated, so we now have some, some other meanings of his name. He's also called what? King of righteousness and then also King of Salem means what? King of peace. These names mean quite a lot. All right, and we are going to get to them in a minute. Who does, the, who does Melchizedek represent? Jesus. All right. Or, turn it around. Melchizedek. Yeah, foreshadowed Christ. All right. So this, this, this whole thing here is about Christ or what? Or high priest. Now, it would seem to me, as I studied it, that there was some also disagreement among these 
Christians, and they were mainly Jewish Christians. And what do you think one of the disagreements would be? Yeah. Yeah. First of all, he's not a Jew. And we know that what? You had to be a what? To be a high priest, you had to belong to a certain what? Yeah, you had to be a Levite. So the first thing is that here's, a, here's somebody who is not, who is not. As a matter of fact, to me, man, the argument could have been that Jesus was what? Yeah, he could not be the high priest. Because he was not what? Yeah, he wasn't a Levite. He was a what? Judah. He was from the tribe of Judah. So I could imagine them there, they're arguing like we like to do in church. <laughs> you know, no, he could he could never be high priest. Yeah. Couldn't be. And I assure you, I'm going to find two texts to prove it to you. Let's go to Ezra. I think that's one of them. Ezra. I just I'm, I'm fitting the jigsaw puzzle together. We're, we're going to get there. Ezra, they returned from the captivity, all right? Remember from the captivity. And of the sons of the priests, the sons of Habiah, the sons of Kaz, the sons of Barzele, who took a wife of the daughters of Barzele, the Gileadite, and was called by their name. Let's continue. These sought their listing among those who were registered by genealogy, but they were not found. Therefore, they were what? Excluded from the what? Priesthood as what? Good as defiled. So you had to prove that you were what? You're a Levite. You had to prove it. And how did you prove it? Yeah. Yes, you had to go by your genealogy. All right? What was written in the book? And if you were not of the tribe of Levi, you could not be a priest. And, or let's read it and then uh, come. And the governor said to them that they should not eat of the most holy things till a priest could consult with the Urim and they were so serious. They were saying what? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not going to serve until we do what? Until we ask God. Yeah, you, yeah. We could have had to prove it. You can't be a priest. You're not, your genealogy doesn't confirm that. Yes. The priests have to be from the tribe of Levi. They had to be from... Aaron. Aaron, there you go. Because then there were other Levites that yes. could not even serve. There Greece. you go. Wonderful. So you think that's an isolated case? Let's go to the next step. See, that, that's when you put it together from Nehemiah. And the priests and the sons of Habiah, the sons of Kaz, the sons of Barzillai, who took a wife of the daughters of Barzillai, the Gideonite, that's what he is and was called by their name, these sought their listings among who were registered by genealogy, but it was not found. Therefore, they were excluded from the priesthood as defied. So you had to be what? A Levite and the name written where? In the book. Yeah, in the genealogy or the registry, like today, you know, you, 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 you want to vote, you better be registered, all right, all right. So, we, we, we come now back to Hebrews. Next verse. What do we notice about this Melchizedek? He had what? He had no father. We'll explain that. He had to have a father. 
There, there you go. You see, we, we, it makes sense. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, he was not mentioned in the book. So, according, then he should not be a what? He should not be a priest. It didn't say that he didn't have a father because if he's a person, he had to have a father. I guess artificial insemination. But, <laughs> but, but they didn't know anything about that then. But so it means that he had a father, he had a mother, but the point they're stressing here that there was what? No genealogy, no record of it. Yes, go on. Melchizedek existed way before the order of a priesthood was there established. You go. There you go. There you go. You have it. Need for that, you know. Yes, there was no need for it. All right, and there's something else about him. He neither had what? Beginning or end of life. But made like the Son of God, or represented God. And he remains a priest what? Continue. We're going to preach now. All right? Yes, Nancy. See that, and apart from the fact that he wasn't a Levite, and, and so we can get over that whole thing, but he... Um, he came before Abraham, so all the things that they say that we, we can't do because it's a Jewish tradition, that goes out the window yep. because this all happened, and, yep. and he was a priest of the Most High yep. before there ever were any kind of Jews or yep. Christians for that. There you go. So, so the emphasis is not on Melchizedek. That's not the emphasis on we spend years trying to find out who he is, where he came from, and all the rest of it. That's not the emphasis. To review, he had no genealogy, no beginning, no ending. So then, he was a priest, not according to what? Not according to the Levites. Because we just read, to be a priest, you had to be a the part of uh, the tribe of Levi and from the clan of Aaron. So this person, this person we are talking about, this person was chosen. To be a priest based on what? All right. God's appointment. It was based with what else? It was based on character and not on what? On genealogy. This person was chosen or appointed a priest not because he was in the family line. He did not inherit it. That's why no genealogy is mentioned. And you could imagine people in church fussing, he's not a what? He can't be a what? He can't be a priest. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he doesn't have the heredity. He doesn't have it. He can't be. It had nothing to do with the Levitical priest. Nothing. He had no ancestry. Not that he didn't have, but it is not mentioned. 
he symbolized Christ. We took so long to tell you that. I could have told you that. Huh? But I wanted you to put it together for yourself. And stop arguing about, well, if he have no mother and he have no father, he's an alien then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we sit down and argue a lot of stuff in the Bible that, that, that's not even necessary. That's not what it was all about. Now, something else about the priests, and he will do it later, but I'll do it now. The priests from the Levitical system were subject to Death. They died. See? They died. When, when they died, they appoint, uh, another one based on the book. But listen to what the text was, what it says here. All right? The Levitical priesthood was temporary. There was no no permanent high priest. They died. Somebody else was named high priest. And since they died then, obviously we could add other things about these Levitical priests. They were what? You can name them. People who die, what, what, what happened? Yeah, they're fallible. They got sick. Yeah, made mistakes. They were weak. And here comes the big one. They were sinners. Yep. They were sinners. Christ was not a Levite. He came from the tribe of Judah. And... Melchizedek prefigured the ministry of Christ. And it says that Christ is a priest for how long? Forever. You fussing about human stuff. And we are always using human reasoning. Sad to say, many of the preachers deal with stuff that's not even part of what's important. And this is what I want us to remember. And this is the worst. We have a high priest. Where? In heaven above right now. What is his role? What is his purpose? Interceding for us and doing what? Also making sure that what? Hmm? Not only interceding for us, but also doing everything possible to ensure that we are saved. He is my priest. He is your what? Your priest. And he's a priest that lives right now forever. He's still priest today. He's still priest right now. And all his time is given to whom? To us. Now we, 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 you know, I know at times we, we feel so alone. We, we feel so, so disconsolate. We, we, we feel so discouraged. We feel so down. 
But if we would remember what? That we have what? A priest. And he has different functions. Advocate. We have someone who's what? Interceding, or if we want to put it in, in our common language, one who is on our side. How often? Oh, continually. He doesn't take a break. The heavenly ministry of Jesus is something that we must continue to keep uppermost in our mind. Yes, Nancy, go on. So what I like about this passage is it says like, he was made like the Son of God. Yes. And he was like, I mean, he, we know he, if, he was, if he was real, well, whatever. He, he lived and he, he died, this um, person. This he, person, Matt yeah. But he was like the Son of God. And going back to the um, Old Testament, I want to say in Genesis, where it says that Abram came upon him and he was served bread and wine by him mm -hmm. and tried to give Abram gifts for when he went into battle. Yes. And he said, no, no, no. I don't need that because yeah. God is with me and I don't, I don't want to have to give you credit or whatever. And, but see, Jesus is different. He is our intercessor and he's God. Mm -hmm. And so the, the gift of protection that um, God gave Abram, our high priest does that in intercession between us and God yeah. because he is God. Yes, yes, yes. I think because of our lack of understanding of what, what's going on here, we, we become to the place where we behave as if we are orphans here on earth. I'm talking about myself. And the slightest thing that happens, we do all. Ah, we fall apart. We disintegrate. And then we turn around and do what? And blame God. And blame him. And then not only blame him, but then we also cause other people to, to, to uh, do the same thing. It, yes, yes, Kathy. I said, without father, without mother, without genealogy, mm -hmm. not about how. So all we know when he says he's like Jesus, because Jesus was born into a low. Mm -hmm. Well, then this guy might have came from a low as Possibly. well. Possibly. So we don't know anything about right. him at all. He just, he just appeared. He just appeared. And the reason for it, we're not talking about him. He represents. So we, instead of worrying about him, we need to concentrate on whom? On who he represents. Like, for example, we have this problem, a parable. What's the, what's the purpose of a parable? Teach what? A lesson. Yeah, it is not to take every word in the parable and try to interpret every word. Yes, yes, a point it was made. And the one that I is on my lips that have me ready to go is Lazarus and Dives. <laughs> Lazarus and Dives. That is the, the, the man who died and went to went wherever he went. Uh, 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 and yeah. And that and that kind of stuff. That's not the purpose. The purpose is when the opportunity comes, you do what? You take it. 
You got nothing to do with going to hell and burning. Blah, 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 blah. That was not the purpose of it. Yeah, and getting water and um, some in heaven and some in hell talking to each other. Come on, come on. <laughs> so, so, so we need we need to understand what the writer of Hebrews is about to do because the whole of chapter 7 deals with the high priest or high priest. Listen to a few things that I wrote down. Jesus is the high priest whose priesthood does not depend on any genealogy. But it depends on whom? Yeah, on he himself. Yes, because he's God. He didn't have to be appointed. He's God. Next one. Jesus is the high priest who lives forever. The day will come when we wouldn't need a high priest. But until then, he remains forever. And the word forever means for as long as it lasts or is necessary. When it isn't necessary, but then. And you know what? Psalms, I think, 100, the one that I have up there, I give it, but it says, uh, I'm going to be priest until what happened to my enemy. Onward. Footstool, yes. Yeah. When they are gone and defeated, there's no need for a high priest. Next one. Jesus as high priest is sinless and never had to do what? Offer any sacrifice for his own sin. You know the priest, the high priest had to do that? I had to do that first. But Jesus doesn't have to do that. He's sinless. Jesus didn't offer sacrifices. He is the sacrifice. You know, he didn't have to go get a, a, a bull or lamb or anything to sacrifice. He is the sacrifice, and the difference is, how often did he make that sacrifice? Once! The high priest did what? Every year. Every year. He opened the way to God. No more sacrifices need to be made. So, you are arguing about high priests, and Verna mentioned it. We, 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 they were talking about the earthly system after the Levitical system. But now we have a different one. As a matter of fact, as the sermon is called a walk, a better high priest. So I don't have to kill a, a, a goat or a sheep. I don't even know if I could do it if I had to. But, but that's the point. Better. Why would we go back to the inferior. You know, one of the reasons why we, we, we would prefer the, 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 the old system because we did something. We had to do it. But this one, he has offered what? Himself. And all he is saying, do what? Accept me. 
but we would rather kill a, kill a sheep because we are involved in it. We did it with our own hands, I guess. As a matter of fact, we, we got it first. But here is something offered to us. And that's the thing that we will not accept. So why are we settling for the inferior when there's something bad? As a matter of fact, as I told you before, the book of Hebrews uses that word better, I think about more than 10 times. He's better than any other thing that we have had before. And yet, we would not accept the better. What are we going to do with this person we call Jesus? What are we going to do with it? My advice today is that we accept. And the gift that he offers. And then I also want us to remember that he is our priest or high priest every day. And he will tell us something. I think, I don't know if I put that text up, Kyle, but 725, and we'll close with this, and if we don't, we go, we're going to read it. 725. You ready? Talking about our high priest. Anybody has it? You want to read it? Therefore, he's able to do what? To save how? To the animals. What does it mean by to the animals? Yeah. Yes. He's able. And again, we can go to that. There are a lot of God is able. God is able. We sing it, all right, but it is written in Scripture too. He's able to do all these things. He's able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through what? Whom? For, sorry, since he what? Always. Not sometimes. He always lives to do what? To make intercession. Who's them? For those who come to him. Yes. For hours. Yes. You know, it's not open 10 to 5, and you got to make sure oh, you get wow. there between 10 and 5. Verna, I love it. I love it. I love it. And, and, and I can, it says, therefore. Here I go again. When you have therefore, there's a conclusion. He's concluding. That is, he, he, after all we have said about him, and we will go through chapter 7, and there's a lot more that is said about him. Therefore, based on who he is, he's able to do what? To save. Who? To, to those that we call castaways. Save to the uttermost. I know, Verna, you always carry a different translation. What does your verse say? You didn't bring, you see that? No, no. <laughs> so, always, always. 
Anybody has a different translation? But the, 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 and you can have them on your on your uh, on your phone or your tablet, whatever you have. Therefore, he's able to save to the end. Or in or in other words, nobody is outside the ambit of salvation. And that is because what? We have a what? We have a high priest. We have a high priest. <laughs> and as Vernon says, he's at work how often? All the time. Yes. He doesn't take vacation. Yeah. He's never too busy. That's what he does. And one of these days, if we have the time, we're going to talk about what goes on in the heavenly sanctuary. We know what happened in the earthly sanctuary. You know, we know that well. But we should know what happens in the heavenly So those who come to him, he lives to make intercession. Kathy, you found something that would help explain it? Yes, do Okay, go uh, on. So, so to save, to go to the utmost, we have able to save completely. Good. We have also able to save forever. Yep. Um, also able to save completely. Um, we went through complete, completely old, once and forever. Yep. And then they stopped there. See? What are we going to do with this high priest today? I tell you what, I'm going to tell you what I have done and what I will continue to do. Choose this high priest. It's easy. You don't have to get up and go do anything. It can be done how? Right here, right now. Understanding who we are dealing with, we can come. We cannot accept. Let us pray. Oh God, our hearts are burning within us. When we see and understand what you have done and what you are doing, O oh Lord, on our behalf. We still don't fully understand what is involved, O oh God. And because of that, many times we give up. We become discouraged. And we become, O oh Lord, to the point where we have no hope. But thank you for reminding us today that you voluntarily gave yourself for us. And now, oh God, in response, we give you ourselves. And we know that you, as we will discover later, you became a high priest with an oath, which means that you will never forsake us. You will never leave us. You will never desert us. What a wonderful Savior. Or as we 
as you told us before, we have an anchor that keeps the soul. Oh God, now, send us from this place with joy inexpressible as we understand that, oh God, you are not dependent on our human reasoning or by our human choosing. You did it of yourself. Not for yourself, but for us. And we can't wait for that day when we will praise your name incessantly. Where we will fall upon our knees and praise your name forever and ever and ever. Give us now, I pray, O oh God. Even if it is just a slight vision of what awaits us. Thank you for your intercession on our behalf. And we leave here today confident that you are able And by your power, we will make it. Thank you so much. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. We are continuing chapter seven because we that was just a snapshot all right from verses seven to ten next week you are going to find some more amazing things about this person say amen again i know we all like better right so why not choose the best, the better high priest who is there, as we all said, continuously, never sleeps, never slumbers, won't get a busy signal, interceding and intervening for us to God. We want to thank those who have joined us online here today, and uh, we invite you again to visit us next week at the same time, and if you're in the area, please visit us. And those of you also in house, we thank you. Now let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we've heard your word. Father, we've been blessed by your word. And Father, may we continue to acknowledge the better high priest, which is your son, Jesus. Be with us now, Father, through the end, and continue to fill us with your mercy and your grace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.